find a jam Pull me out on a tight spot Let me listen Anglicans on the move right now Laborers in the new wine vineyard Anglicans on the move right now Laborers in the new wine vineyard Eating to the bone Rallying for a pause Anglicans on the move right now Hey the Anglican voice, and I don't know if Jesus is your choice mm-hmm. You better come show one the choice if you know God coming for the girls and the boys mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what time Jesus calls you after What matters is as long as you answer Ooh. I will shake up his spine uh-huh. to get some of that brand new wine Anglicans on the move right now Anglicans on the move right now Eden to the pole, rallying for a cause Anglicans on the move right now Good evening listeners in Trinidad and Tobago and of course beyond Welcome to the Anglican Voice Brought to you by the Incorporated Trustees of the Anglican Church in the Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago. I am Sharon Wynne, and my co-host this evening is the well-known <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> Doctor. Hi, Miss 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 Wynn. <laughs> Doctor I... Phaedra Pierre. <laughs> and Doctor Pierre, how are you? How are you dealing with this heat? Hey, hey. There's something else, you know, but you realize these days we're also getting some very heavy showers around midday. Yes, in between. Yes, yes. Yeah. So mm-hmm. thank God for the sun and thank God for the rain. Very true. Thank him all the time. I hope, of course, with all this heat, everybody is staying hydrated because in, this is the time you have to drink water even more. Yep. Correct. Yes. And on this Anglican Voice, we want to welcome all our listeners because, as you know, Anglican Voice is a special program that is heard every Sunday. And this Sunday, we have something just as special. I'm not going to tell you what it's all about, but I want listeners to listen to an excerpt of this Calypso. And I know you will know who is the person singing and you will get an idea exactly what we will be speaking about this evening. Education, education, this is the foundation. Our rising population needs sound education to be recognized anywhere you go. Have your certificate to show To enjoy any kind of happiness Knowledge is the key to success Children go to school and learn well Otherwise later on in life you won't catch real hell Without an education in your head Your whole life will be pure misery, you're better off dead For there is simply no room in this whole wide world For an uneducated little boy or girl Don't allow idle companions to lead you astray To earn tomorrow, you got to learn today Yes, employment, you must be intelligent It's essential, very essential to have your credentials But if you're block-headed like a mule No one will employ a fool You'll be the last one to be hired And the first one to be fired Children go to school and learn well Otherwise later on in life you gon' catch real hell Without an education in your head 
Your whole life will be pure misery, you're better off dead For there is simply no room in this whole wide world For an uneducated little boy or girl Don't follow idle companions or you will get burned To earn, to earn, you got to learn Back listeners to the Anglican Voice, and I'm sure after hearing part of Sparrow's Calypso, you know that this evening's program is on education. Yes, let's talk education, education in our Anglican schools. And this evening we have three special guests. We have Mr. Peter Thomas, who is the chairman of the Anglican Education Board of Management, Ms. Peridot Webster a stakeholder engagement member of the stakeholder engagement committee and Mrs. Heather McIntosh Simon, another stakeholder of the engagement subcommittee. But before we begin our conversation, Dr. Peer, please lead us with an opening prayer. Let us pray in the name of the Father <clears throat> and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord and Father, we thank you for being able to join together this evening to discuss this ministry that we feel is one of the most important ministries because it helps us to nurture and to, to work on the development of our young people, this thing called education. We pray, Lord, that you will guide us in our discussions that you will enlighten the discussions and that you will always be with us as we step into this new academic year. We pray especially for our students, all of our students who will begin school tomorrow, from the youngest in preschool to those in tertiary education who will also be starting this week. We pray as well, of course, for our teachers, our administrators, and for all of the personnel in the Ministry of Education who make sure that all is running well in our schools. Lord, we also pray especially for the Anglican Education Board of Management, its new members, its new format, that you will guide the chair and the members to make decisions in the best interests of all those involved. And as always, we do all these things for your honor and glory. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Dr. Pierre. And as I mentioned before, we have three special guests. We have the chairman, of the Anglican Education Board of Management, Mr. Peter Thomas. And along with him, we have Ms. Peridot Webster and Ms. Heather McIntosh Simon, both of them stakeholders, engagement members, or should I say members of the engagement subcommittee. Good evening and welcome. Thank you, Ms. Wynne, for having us. Good evening, Ms. Wynn. Good evening to Phaedra and to all of Trinidad and Tobago. Good evening, everyone, and thank you very much for having us. You're welcome. We are glad to have you, and we are glad to be discussing a very important topic, education. Mr. Thomas, as the chairman of the Anglican Education Board of Management, I know you would like to tell us a little bit about your two members, so go right ahead. You're free to let us learn a little bit more about your members that we have with us this evening. Well, the new Anglican board has six subcommittees and stakeholder engagement is one such committee. And the two members with me tonight are members of that subcommittee. And Ms. Heather um, Simon is the lead of that subcommittee. 
I, I could not be on this show without these two ladies. They are my support. Okay. And you have good support, strong support there. Woman power, you call it. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Good. Now, I know everything is changing. The world is changing. Education is changing. And the Anglican Church is changing along with it. And right now, we, are, we have celebrated, we're still celebrating 200 years of existence. And the theme was, of course, the celebration is historical voice, theological choice, and culturally rejoice. Now, I'm looking at the words historical voice. And, and Mr. Thomas, can you give us a synopsis of the history of the Anglican Education Board of Management? How did it all begin? Well, to take up your point that the world is changing, so too um, is education changing. So that the previous board, um, through documentary and anecdotal evidence, um, was informed that the Anglican schools were not doing too very well at all. So that in January of 2020, mm -hmm. Bishop Claude Berkeley addressed the underperformance of Anglican schools and the number of challenges facing the board in relation to the effective functioning of these primary schools. And so a task force was approved by the Anglican Education Board of Management and was commissioned on September the 1st, 2020. And they had several objectives, but I would want to share two main objectives with you. The board, the task force was to investigate the present operations of the 59 Anglican primary schools and the five early childhood care and education centers, and so develop a roadmap for the future operations of our schools. The task force was also mandated to make recommendations for the meaningful, sustainable transformation of the present modus operandi of the Anglican Education Board of Management. And this task force was given to one year to submit its report, but then came COVID. And so the report was submitted two years later, that is last year, 2022. And uh, I will just tell you the main, one of the main <coughs> recommendations of that task force. By the way, that task was headed by um, Dr. Steve West. And the, the very first mandate was to restructure the board and that it should comprise of a chairman, the archdeacon or senior cleric from each region. You know that there are four regions in the diocese. And it should have members with the following expertise. We should have on the board um, human resource management, legal, finance, construction and maintenance, communication, curriculum, administration, measurement and evaluation, special ed, and early childhood care and education. And Ms. Wynne, I assure you that we have all those skills on the board as we speak. That is so good, so good to hear. You see, so make sure, you're making sure that when you go forward, it would have come from educated people who are, know what is actually happening in the country, which is so very important. Now, in order to, you know, to bring about this report, how did they execute it? You know, did they do surveys? What was done for them to get the information to pass it on now to the board? Right. So you are quite right. The task force was broken up into little teams. 
and the teams went out and interviewed principals, teachers, parents, students, just about everybody. And they put together the report and it was submitted last year, August, and the bishop now asked me to assist with the implementation of the report. And this is how I became chairman. I was appointed chairman. And what we are doing now is implementing the re task force report. Um, our first meeting was held in February. We had a strategic planning session in March. And from March until now, we have been working on developing a strategic plan. I can boast now that the plan is completed and we are going to launch that plan next week, Friday, when we are going to have for the very first time a principal's conference. We are, we, where we are inviting all 59 principals of our schools all the managers, the ECCE administrators, representatives from the regional education committees, and we are going to have for the very first time a principal conference, and the strategic plan will be launched then. And where will you be at, having the conference? At the Bishop Anstey Trinity East College. Okay. Yes, Friday, the 8th September. 8th of September. Just soon after school reopens. Yes. Very well said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So that means... We are giving the principals time to settle down in school, have everything mm -hmm. going, and then we bring them out. Yeah. All right. So a lot of the information, of course, or a lot of the recommendations would have been data-driven. Yes. And, of course, we know the importance of data All our decisions on the board are data-driven, all. And Ms. Simon, I know you, you are the, the head of the subcommittee. Can you give us an idea of what exactly you have to do, what your committee has to do as part of the implementation of the strategic plan? Sure. Good evening again. Um, the AEBM believes that in order for um, the advancement of Anglican education, the, the, the changing of the landscape, Chair would have spoken a little while ago about the fact that education and the educational landscape as a whole has been changing. And we as a, as a board believe that the, the advancement that we are hoping to achieve can only be done via collaboration and consultation. So really and truly, this subcommittee of the board, the Stakeholder Engagement Subcommittee of the board, is working towards building alliances with all of the stakeholders in education. Sometimes we, we, we believe that certain groups are stakeholder groups and others are less important. But we see all of the stakeholder groups, be it the Ministry of Education, be it the Teaching Service Commission, be it our, our teachers, our administrators, you understand, even the security guards, the parents and the children as well are all part of this education process. And in order for us to determine the way forward and to be actually be able to reach the goals that we have set for ourselves, it can only be done via collaboration and consultation. So our main focus, our main aim as the Stakeholder Engagement Committee is finding ways in which we can strengthen the alliances that we have with all of our stakeholders to try to chart the way forward for all of us. Wonderful, wonderful. We are on the move, Anglicans really on the move, as the song Indeed. says. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so good, good to hear because, I mean, I have been in the education system over 40 or so years, so I know that we really need change, especially since the pandemic and post-pandemic. Many Correct. changes have to be made. I Ms. think Be the pandemic would have highlighted many of the areas of that were challenges so some areas were challenges and might have passed unnoticed mm -hmm. but the pandemic most definitely would have put a spotlight on 
all of the areas of our inefficiencies. And um, I don't think that that we should sit and dwell on on the weaknesses that we have, but rather turn them into ways for growth and for improvement. And that's what we're trying to do. And, you know, Heather, as we as we talk about the pandemic, you know, sometimes people feel COVID is over and the pandemic is done. And, you know, mm-hmm. we are going back to normal, whatever. The life is normal, yeah. But the bottom line is that life has changed. Correct. And what was normal before pandemic is not... We can never go back to that. That's right. That's right. So I, I think... If we wanted to, we can't. We can't go back to that. <laughs> it's quite opportune that, you know, that the that the restructuring of the education board came at the time that it did, because, you know, it, it's going to help with that um, reformulation of... Reimagining of the mission of education. Correct. Correct. Yeah, correct. And Mr. Thomas, I understand that, that uh, well, I know that our diocese on the whole is talking about reimagining, but that, that's, that's t- also taken into consideration for the conference? Actually, it is the theme of the conference. And the bishop will be the featured speaker, and his address will be reimagining mission, the role of the principal in our Anglican schools. So that is the very theme of good team, our country. Good team. Next very Friday. good team. Yeah. Good, good team. I like that team. And I really hope that all <laughs> the principals will be out to really take part in the, the conference because we need the input of each principal in you know, the Anglican schools. And of course, the ECC. It centers. is our prayer. Yes. It is our prayer. And it reminds me of the Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 to 24. Which, is, which says you were taught to put away your former way of life, your old self, corrupt and deluded by its lust, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to clothe yourselves with the new self, created according to the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So we are even we are following scripture as well. And I often say to people, yes, the pandemic really had some bad, bad events, bad times, but there's a lot of positive that came out of it and dr peer mentioned it the fact that we the board could have now come together have the task force and reimagine start afresh look at what was and we move forward forward always as they say carry that miss webster present miss <laughs> 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 I know you two have an important role to play, as you're also one of the members of the subcommittee, the Stakeholder Engagement Committee. Yes. What do you see as your role, as you know, as part of the committee, as we all move forward together? All right. Well, in terms of all, I wouldn't say my role, but all role. Mm-hmm. Um, particularly where communication is concerned, because sometimes we may find there may be a disconnect between um, the different stakeholders, you know, responsible for the education of all the educational issues, the education of all all of our, our children and our institutions as a whole, right? So our role right now is to ensure um, we have we have a number of we have a number of um, programs set up. We can't let that cut out of the bag as yet. Um, <laughs> to, assure, to assure that that transition is a seamless one, to ensure that teachers and the RECs and all of the other stakeholders can know that they can reach out to members of the board. It's 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 not a we are not a distant figure. We are here and we are on the ground to ensure that we listen to what is happening. Because the bottom line is to ensure that the education of our children comes first. Quality education comes first and foremost. And wh- and whatever else that we can help with along the way to ensure that we are there. So I can't let too much out of the bag as yet. But um, on the day of the principal's conference that we are working towards, and we will be launching it there. Right, so your plan is soon to be exposed to the, yes. the principles. <laughs> yes, yes. 
Uh, and not right. just to the principal and to the principals, to the principals and to the community at large, meaning the the Anglican community and okay. the community that is Trinidad and Tobago, you know. So let them know because sometimes we are seen as probably being a bit silent and we are gradually changing that while that has its benefit at times. We are trying our best to change that bit by bit. Rome was not built in a day, but starting off with the first ever principles conference, which is something that has it has never been done. And this is the first step in us reaching out to our principles, reaching out to our stakeholders to let them know that we are here. Yes, because I know sometimes principals feel you couldn't go to the board, you're afraid to go to the board, that sort of thing. So now you're letting everyone know they are free to come and have this well, That's the case. That's the case. <laughs> at times, at times, <laughs> you know, sometimes, you, you know, you know, <laughs> sometimes you wonder, okay, should I, shouldn't I? These things would have happened. At least I've heard the rumors now and then, you know. Um, which well, is you know, good. At least, of course, you follow, you follow, of course, you follow the, the regular chain, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But making us a bit a, a bit more accessible, you know what I mean? All right. So okay. when when on the day of the conference we will be launching those avenues and those those platforms and those programs that we have been working on and fine tuning. Heather and I have been working round the clock, literally. That's assiduously is the word. <laughs> um, Miss Wayne, we've been talking about the Staker and um engagement subcommittee. Mm -hmm. I would have mentioned earlier that there are six subcommittees, and I want to share with the listening audience those subcommittees. So we have the the Stakeholder Engagement Committee, and the Mm -hmm. two members here are members of that committee. Mm -hmm. We also have a Curriculum Delivery Teacher Quality Committee. Okay. We have a Policy and Governance Subcommittee. We have physical environment, leadership Mm -hmm. and development, religious and sociocultural environment. And um, there is a lady here called Phaedra Peer. She is on that committee, religious, sociocultural environment. Mr. Thomas, she's staying quiet and decide, yeah, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Chill. (laughs) Yes. Pedro. Let's send the cat out of the bag. No, no, that cat was running all over the place. <laughs> Good. Okay. Yes. Well, I know that it's so important that um, the work is spread around. You know, they, they, we don't want two or three people to have all of the responsibility for the whole strategic plan and everything. And so, you know, the development of, of subcommittees and um many hands make light work yeah and mm-hmm. many minds bring great ideas to the implementation of that strategic plan so yes we have um several people on on our on our six subcommittees okay and as an anglican schools i'm sure you have a subcommittee dealing with the religious aspect Of course, we do. Religious Sociocultural Subcommittee. Okay. So they will be looking at that. They will be in charge of religious education in our schools. Yes. Now, we all know in Trinidad and Tobago that people determine if a school is good or not based on the results of the C exam. Can, I know you mentioned, Mr. Thomas, that we are not performing the way we should. And I don't know if I'm getting into the strategic plan aspect too much, but um, can you give us one or two little ideas of what plans you have to make the performance of the school, our Anglican schools, become better than it is right now? Well, the as I said earlier, mm-hmm. we were informed that our schools were not doing well at all. There mm-hmm. were too many children in the under thirty percent, um, and too little 
too many under the 50 percent also so the strategic plan is aimed overall at improving the performance of our schools so what we are trying to do is to move our schools out of the less than 30 percent mm -hmm. and move them out of the less than 50 percent and move them upwards into if possible the hundred percent that that is the aim of the strategic plan okay now what i am very glad to hear about is that i don't know or Perry will want to elaborate to that okay um i was going to say um not you know trying to cut the conversation that we we are looking at the academic performance of the school but we are also looking at the other elements. So if you listen to the names of the various subcommittees that we have, we also recognize that there is the socio and cultural part of the development of the individual as well. It is not lost on us that academics does not make the whole person. We are interested in developing the entire child, and we recognize that the entire child cannot be properly developed if you're concentrating on academics alone. So getting our students out of the under 30 and out of the under 50 is important to us. It is. But there are other aspects that are also important. So we have a committee that is dealing with the physical environment because we understand that students will not be able to learn if they are in an environment that is not conducive to learning. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we're not just talking about academic learning, but we're also talking about the extracurricular activities and the enrichment activities that need to be done in order to help to develop the entire child. The religious and the socio-cultural aspect of um, the committee as well is dealing with the religious part of the education of the child, yeah, ensuring that the child is spiritually grounded, but also trying to get children involved in all kinds of other other avenues in which they can show progress and in which they can feel good about themselves and have their self-esteem raised. So yes, academics is, a, is, is the marker that the Ministry of Education will use. But we as the Anglican Board, we are not saying, we are not limiting ourselves and our involvement in the schools to only academia. We are looking to develop well-rounded students and to have our students perform commendably in whatever area the gift that they have received from God will have them perform. And Heather, you have said it wonderfully. You talk about the all-round education, being able to have co-curricular and extracurricular activities along with the academics. And we'll take a short pause here as we listen to the last two verses of Sparrow's Education. Calypso. Illiteracy, illiteracy is man's greatest enemy. It's your duty, yes, your duty, stamp it out completely. Ignorance always impedes progress. Education saves you much distress. So learn, learn, learn as much as you can. For the nation's future's in your hand. Children stay in school and learn well. Otherwise, later on in life, you will catch real hell. Without an education in your head, your whole life will be pure misery. You're better off dead. For there is simply no room in this whole wide world for an uneducated little boy or girl. Don't allow idle companions to lead you astray. To earn tomorrow, you got to learn today. It's a treasure, yes a treasure, beyond any measure. Just secure it, just secure it, don't ever ignore it. To fight life's battles, come what may. Education lights up your way. 
Without it you'll never get through Success or failure now is up to you Children go to school and learn well Otherwise later on in life you gonna catch real hell Without an education in your head Your whole life will be pure misery You're better off dead For there is simply no room in this whole wide world For an uneducated little boy or girl Don't allow idle companions to lead you astray To learn tomorrow you got to learn today Welcome back, listeners. You are listening to the Anglican Voice. And this evening, we are discussing education in our Anglican schools. And we continue with the topic. And Miss Simon, you ended the first session by talking about all-rounded school children. They have in co-curricular, extracurricular, and also the academics. That truly makes an all-rounded individual. I listened to Mr. Thomas as he mentioned some of the committees, subcommittees that made up the task force. And we know children are into the technology and technology all around. Technology, yes, it has its disadvantages, but it, there's also a lot of advantages. How are you all going to use the technology that we have presently? I know COVID would have encouraged it, but how are you all planning to use the technology to assist in the teaching and learning process? Anyone? You read that answer? one is for that one is for the stakeholder engagement committee. There. Well, you and see, Perry. Perry was trying to hide some of our secrets that we have in store for next week. Yeah, so Ms. one Ms. of the Wynne is exposing us. Yeah, and Miss <laughs> Wynne is trying to expose all of the things that we say that we're going to try and hide and hold back. You understand, Miss <laughs> Wynne is trying to put to the forefront. So, Miss Wynne, what I will say to you is that mm -hmm. we do recognize the value of of technology. I mean, the the last three and a half years of our lives have proven to us. How, how deeply in, um, embedded in our existence is technology. The children are using it a lot more than many of the adults around are using it. And for many children, it was a seamless transition for the use of technology. Um, and we as a board, we have recognized that if we are to be engaging with our stakeholders, the, the use of technology has to be one of the tools that we are going to use for that engagement. So yes, we have been doing a lot of work in trying to um, bring the AEBM into the 21st century, if we put it that way, in the use of technology, but also going back to the schools and the use of technology in schools, we are also trying to find ways in which we can support our schools, um, both the ECCEs as well as the primary schools, to try to encourage the, the, the use of technology in the schools, to try to get more schools with computer labs and, you know, so that children will have access to these things because the technology is not going anywhere. And by the time they get it, into secondary and beyond, they will need to use these forms of, of, of um, these items, these apparatus and, you know, all of the apps and everything else. So we're better to begin this learning than in the ECCE and in the primary school. So we are trying to, but of course, as you would be, you know, fully aware, the, the use of technology requires having resources. So mm -hmm. we are working towards getting some of the resources to be able to support our schools so that they can better equip our students to face the real world, which is full of technology in all of its forms and fashions. Yes, indeed. Lots of fun have there, I, huh? I love, have I like how you bust the mark, but you didn't bust the mark. I like that. It's <laughs> you it's see, that's why they pay me, you know. That's yeah. why they pay me. They pay yeah. me for the salary. Yeah, yeah. 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 
Make it make it clear you are being paid for the Calypsonian talent. <laughs> okay. All right. Just just to expand, Miss Wynn, just to expand on what Heather was saying, uh, mm -hmm. in terms of the children and focusing on academic, um, well, focusing on the all wrong development of the child. Um, one of the subcommittees I mentioned was the leadership development subcommittee. And that committee <clears throat> will be looking at a lot of training because you would know that the principal is in charge of the curriculum in the school. Mm -hmm. And therefore the board is planning a lot of workshops and training sessions for principals, for school managers, for members of the regional education committees, workshops for teachers, so this committee is a very important committee too, and they have a lot of work laid out for the rest of the school of the of the year, the upcoming year, the first year of the strat plan. So I, mm -hmm. I just wanted to throw that in there. Okay. That we are focusing on administration also, yes. Yes, and it will actually help to reduce a lot of the work, you know, all the paper and we really need to the principals, um, sorry about that, I got distracted there for a second. Yeah, the technology really would assist the principals also in acquiring data for their schools. They would know the weaknesses and the challenges and, you know, and what action plans they can use for each school because each school is different. So you have to work with each school differently. Yeah. So I am glad you all would be looking at training the principals because they, and they have to have constant training as well as the teachers, all the stakeholders, actually, when you look at it, you know, within the school need some form of training, but it's, it's not just technology, probably uh, looking at communication and all those aspects of being able to interact with people. How do you do it? You know, listening in skills all those things have to be fine-tuned especially nowadays the legal aspect is also important i realize mr thomas mentioned that as well because yes, parents we have, we have we have two attorneys on the board for the very first time that's good <laughs> mm -hmm. that's good because you know as soon as they do something or say something somebody ready to take it to court you know, you know. We live so in a very have, litigious society, yeah. Yeah, so we have to be very conscious of that. And really, I'm glad to know that you have lawyers on the team as well. And as we move on and we talk about education, did you have, I know you talked about the, the, as the fact that the report was delayed about, what, about two years or so or maybe a year because it was supposed to be done in one year and you ended up doing it in two years. Two years, yeah, yeah. Has this report, any aspect of it been told to the Ministry of Education to let them know what are some of the problems of the Anglican schools? Not as yet, not as yet. We are waiting until we uh, launch our strap plan Mm -hmm. as the two young ladies said, before we divulge all that we okay. intend to do, then our stakeholders will be um, engaged, so to speak. Yeah. This plan real secret, boy. Hmm, I better to go and peep. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should invite you to the conference. I have to come and peep. <laughs> no, don't, don't peep. We will invite you. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, I, I think it's, it's recognition. Sorry to cut you. It's recognition of the importance that we that the important place that we have for the leaders of our institutions. Yeah, um, a lot of the things that we have in the strategic plan we want to share with our leaders before mm -hmm. we share it with the general public. Yeah, we want to give them the pride of place that they deserve. So if we are going to be making changes and advances, it is only fair that we have that discussion with them first before we go spreading it to everybody else. So it's just a question of of recognizing their role and their importance and showing, you know, them the, the, the honor and the value that we place on them and not wanting to share all the business before we tell them. That's all. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. Well put. Yes. <laughs> Very well, good. But I think uh, to, to, to emphasize, you, you emphasize 
um, sharing this with them first. That means that there is a, another step after this, right? After the conference with the principals. Correct. So there is going to be some of the information we keep for ourselves within our own spaces, but some of the information would be for public consumption. So, you know, after the conference, there will be the next phase where we will be sharing other pieces of information with other stakeholders, but the principals will get the whole hog next week, Friday. I like that, the whole hog. <laughs> yes, very good. And they are the leaders that attend the school, so we really need to start with them because once they are motivated, yes. it's going to go right down to the teachers, the parents, the children, and everybody will be on board as we exactly. go forward. You know, that's exactly. very important. So, Mr. Thomas, I don't know if you want to... um. If you want to share any, I, I know we're not letting the, the, the cat out of the bag or anything, but maybe um, some of the elements that were considered uh, most important in the strategic plan. Um, my two fair ladies, do you want to take that one? I think of note in the strategic plan is the collaboration that we had, I would like to take this opportunity, seeing that the floor has been given to me, to commend my colleagues of the various subcommittees and the hard work that has been put out by all of us. I will especially like to thank the chair of the stakeholder of the not stakeholder of the strategic planning committee, Miss Nicole Oliver, who has been leading the charge and you know reeling us all in and getting us all to do our part to put the entire plan together. Um, as Mr. Thomas would have said, the strategic plan that we have is a plan, an action plan that we have in the various areas. So what we would have done is that each of the six areas would have um, developed a plan of action that would take three years to come to fruition, right? Um, and we would have separated each one of the years. I mean, we, we could only plan. And when we start going down the road is when we will realize, I mean, sometimes you leave home intending to drive down the Church of Roosevelt Highway and then you hear it have an accident and you turn onto the Eastern Main Road. So um, we have the plan to pass down Church of Roosevelt Highway. And who knows, six months or eight months down the road, we may have to turn onto the Eastern Main Road, right? But what we have done is that we've charted the way for the next three years and we've divided that plan into three individual years. And the intention is that as we go through the three-year process, we will stop and review, reflect, did this work, did this not work, were we able to achieve, and then move forward and decide whether we turn it off here or we continue in straight down the road. So each of the six subcommittees would have developed an action plan for that particular subcommittee over the course of the three years. Yeah. And um, as a result of that, I don't want to, again, I don't want to let too much out now, you know, without having spoken to the principals. But the idea is that we have, as a team, come up with a plan of action in each of the six areas for the five ECCEs and the 59 primary schools in the hopes that by putting this plan, by implementing this plan, three years from now, there will no longer be any Anglican schools that are on the under 30% and there will, no, there will be no Anglican schools under 50%. And we will also be performing commended, commendably in arts and culture and sports and all of the other areas and developing well-rounded individuals to make an impact in society as a whole. You mentioned well-rounded individuals. And there's a little tune I know children love to sing, and that's Jesus wants me for a sunbeam. So we want to make sure those sunbeams are shining bright. You know, because exactly. Exactly. each one, each child must leave our Anglican schools better individuals, better so that they would be more productive Adults in the future, and we're coming down. That's unfortunately, the the plan. so we're on the right road. We, we are on the move. We on the move. And we can on the move. Exactly right. That is correct. And unfortunately, I believe we are getting closer to the closing time. 
So I'm going to ask Mr. Thomas. I know Ms. Simon, she summarized everything wonderfully, but I still like to hear from other people. And I want to hear Mr. Thomas. And I also want to hear Ms. Webster. What are your final words? Especially, of course, we're dealing with education in our Anglican schools. All right, Ms. Webster will go first. The chair always speaks last. All right. Now, for me, being a, being a parent and, and two of my children attending Anglican schools, um, it is my privilege to serve. It really is my privilege to serve and hoping that we can, we will do the best that we can do to ensure that our corner is brightened. Yes. And we are looking forward to meeting with our principals on September the 8th to introduce them to the new board, to introduce them to all that we have planned and looking forward to working with all of the relevant stakeholders for the betterment of our schools. Wonderful. Mr. Thomas? I am very excited about what is happening with this new board. I am very thankful for the opportunity to serve, to lead this group of wonderful people. And I, I am excited about the strategic plan that we have. And may I say that after Friday, after Friday's conference, we go straight into developing an operational manual because we have to develop a whole number of policies that will guide what we do on the board. So I, I am just excited about this whole thing. And I want to thank all the mem members of my board and especially the leads of all the subcommittees because they have really, really worked assiduously in getting us where we are. And I, I, I speak for everybody when I say I'm excited. I think everybody ex is excited about this. So I just ask God's continued blessings on the board as we move forward. And I'm sure the teachers who are listening, the principals who are listening will be excited as much to be at that meeting on the 8th of September to hear all the wonderful plans we have for our Anglican schools and our ECCE centers. I'm sure yes. they would be, yeah. Um, Ms. Simon, I, I don't know if you want, I know you have given us quite a bit. I don't know if you have a few words you would like to tell us again, your final words before we close off the program. Um, no, you know, Miss Wynn, um, thank you for the opportunity to speak again, but I think I have I have yes. exhausted all that, I, <laughs> all that I would have wanted to say. Thank I, you I'm so just much. making sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And we, of course, we, all the members of the Anglican Voice Committee, we are also very thankful for all the work that the Anglican Board of Education, of my, sorry, I call it Anglican Board of Education, Anglican Education Board of Management. So, so we wish to sincerely thank the members who were present with us this evening, Mr. Peter Brown. Sorry, I keep calling you Brown, Mr. Peter Thomas. I promise not to make that mistake. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Mr. Peter <laughs> Th Thomas, Chairman of the Anglican Education Board of Management. And we had along with him Ms. Peridot Webster and Ms. Heather McIntosh Simon, both members of the subcommittee which deals with the stakeholders within the Anglican schools. And we really appreciate the wealth of information that you gave to us you gave to our listeners on the way forward as it pertains to education in our anglican primary schools and the ecc centers and we hope of course that the work of the board continues in our anglican schools and would be of great success as we know education is important to all of us and mr thomas before we leave we must always end with a closing prayer. So I'm going to ask you to please say the closing prayer for us this evening. No problem. Creator God, Father of the universe and all that is in it, 
We thank you for this opportunity provided by the Anglican Voice to tell the good story of the new Anglican Education Board of Management. We ask your continued blessing on the board, on the bishop, all members of clergy, all members of our diocese, and very importantly, all the children of this nation. Father, we ask your continued guidance and support, and we ask you to lighten our darkness, we beseech you, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Christ of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all this day and all day. Amen. 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 And I think I'm why the bishop chose Mr. Thomas to be the, the, the chair, you know. Good night, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we really have to say good night, not only to Pedro, but we have to say it to all the listeners who are tuning in with us right now. And we want to thank them for tuning into the Anglican Voice. And please to remember that they can tune in next Sunday at 8 p.m. right here on I-95.5 FM. They can also listen to us on Facebook and on YouTube. Dr. Phaedra Pierre, I wish to also thank you for being with me this evening and co-hosting with me. And we wish everyone a wonderful, cool rest of the week and a blessed week. Have a good night. And especially to our students and our teachers going out there yes, this week. Yes, school opening tomorrow. New Year. Yes, all the best. Welcome back and God bless. Yes, thank Happy you very much. Welcome back. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Anglicans on the move right now. Laborers in the new wine vineyard. Anglicans on the move right now. Laborers in the new wine vineyard. Eating to the bone. Running in for a pause. Anglicans on the move right now. Hey, the Anglican voice. And I don't know if Jesus is your choice. You better come show what the choice if you know God coming for the girls and the boys. It doesn't matter what time Jesus calls you after. What matters is as long as you answer. I will shake up his spine to get some of that brand new wine. Anglicans on the move right now. Anglicans on the move right now. Eating to the core, rallying for a cause. Anglicans on the move right now.